been a couple of days since the concrete pour and one thing when you haven't been able to get to site you're always thinking what's what's happening have i missed a lot so we're gonna go and take a look off we go again yeah. I'm building a family home, which is going to be very energy efficient. I've learned a lot about the passive house standard over the last few years. And the bottom line is it delivers comfortable, healthy buildings, which is why I want our family home to meet this target. What's interesting is it can all be achieved with familiar materials and using existing skills. We're building this as a traditional building. And so in other words, it's masonry rather than timber frame. Um, and we're putting insulation in the cavity wall. So again, very, very traditional, very normal kind of construction so that um, the skills, the materials are all available for everybody. We all know how to do it. There's just more of it. Building this way is also cost effective. The strip foundation is in. So what are the next steps? We'll be looking at doing the block work up to damp course ready for the block and beam floor to go on, getting some of the drainage in that's got to go into the floor voids and also getting service pipes in. I am now walking along a line that will soon become a wall. You see that a bit of string here, an important piece of string. As we start to get out of the ground, the excavator and dumper can be sent packing. But there is one piece of kit that will be staying. What is it? A telehandler, which is a large forklift with long reach which we use throughout the project for bringing materials in and moving stuff about, putting the roof trusses on, loading blocks and bricks out. Especially where, where the entrance is so far away from the building itself, just moving materials that are delivered from there to the site with a forklift is much more cost effective. Kieran, how does it feel to be the first person to lay some blocks on our build? <laughs> yeah, I always try and get the first ones down. <laughs> And Kieran was stacking up his first. He'd fired up the cement mixer for the first time on this project. Got out some key tools that we'd be using a lot over the next few weeks. And marked out the corners of the house. The very first day, we set out all the string lines. So everything we now do all goes from the one plinth line we've got all the way around the outside. and that is your first corner. A beam and block floor has been specified on this project, but why? We use beam and block flooring actually because it's, it's pretty cost effective. It doesn't suffer the risk of settlement, which a ground bearing slab can do. Um, so we quite like that. And actually it produces a reasonably efficient detail. There is a thermal bridge around the edge, but we include for that and we've modeled it so that we can be sure that we're still getting the performance we need. It doesn't take long to create the dwarf walls which will support the precast concrete beams. And actually, with a few more hands on deck, it doesn't take long to arrange the beams and fill in the jigsaw puzzle. The trick here seems to be keeping the flow of materials coming to sight. Where the services poke through, the odd adjustment must be made. Once all the blocks are in, the floor is then brushed with sand. At a later date, they'll get insulated and screeded on top. But that's given us, at this stage, it's given us a nice flat base to, to work off of. Next time the brickwork continues. Amazing how much it's changed, isn't it? Yes, it comes on pretty quickly now. And there's a delivery or two. This feels like something out of Indiana Jones, the wall of building supplies. 